All right, welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. I am excited for this one for a couple of reasons. The title, let me give you the title. It's How Your Tech Stack is Costing You Money. And I hate tech, and my tech stack is for sure costing me money. So selfishly, I'm excited to dive in here and figure out what's going on and what this is all about. We have an amazing guest, but let's let's refresh and tie back to the Harmonious architecture. So what is it? We're disrupting the way you think about and see your business. It's the new lenses to view your business through. There's so much content out there. This right here is content. We're giving you the context of how it applies to your business so you can actually grow and scale without pulling your hair out. We all want that. So let's enough about me. Let's dive in. I want to bring on my special guest today, Pamela. Pam, thanks for coming here. I'm excited to have you. Brendan, it's such a pleasure. And Anything harmonious, I'm in. So thanks for having me. That's awesome. Now, I just met Pamela, but I did find out she is an Irish Canadian. So I think we're going to have a ton of fun here. And I'm super excited to dive in. Uh, so let's let's get going. So I want to find out, you know, um, we're talking about tech stacks. Yes. So let's right off the bat, can we define what a tech stack is? And then I want to figure out how we got here. So it's really what I'm talking about is the software. So you need software to run your business and it's all online today. So you log into it just like the apps that we're using here and you have your account and you're using one, two, three, 20 pieces of software to run your business in a day or in general. And that stack can get really bloated really quickly. And before you know it, it's costing you more or it's ineffective, so it's costing you more as well. And it can be really easy to all of a sudden sign up for the next piece, the next piece, the next piece, and before you know it, you're in trouble. Yeah, and also everything has a 14 or a 30 day free trial. So you're like, oh, I'll just try it. And then in 30 days, you have $5,000 of tech being charged to you that you forgot about. Right, right. And it's really dangerous to go into software on a 14 or 30 day trial because it's almost impossible to use the software effectively if you're not all in. So those trials actually are costing us the most valuable thing that we have and that's our time. Well, let's just pause right there. I've never heard anybody say that. I've heard the opposite, which is, oh, just try it. It's 14 days, it's 30 days, it's free. You'll get the feel. So I love that. Um, How can you try a CRM? How can you try yeah. a piece of funnel software? So then let's let's back up. I I I want to dive into this because this is completely opposite of like I said what I've ever heard. So what is the effective way to actually evaluate a software before you start using it? Features people want to go to that feature list and what's those little green check marks at each price point and they're checking all these features. And if we know anything about business, it's never the features. Is it really that we're wanting it's what's behind that. What is it that I can actually do with this software in my business or this offer? So, so you do need to evaluate what is it that are just absolutes for you. And then what you want to take a look at are the other pieces of the software. And those are technology. How is it being built? How is it being developed? How is it being run? Is the company stable? Well, we've had some companies lately, all of a sudden, they were selling lifetime offers and now they're almost out of business. They can't even produce what it is they promised. So you need to dig into those things in the back end and then understand what does the service look like and are they transparent? Are they generous? Are they going to nickel and dime you to death, right? And are they going to listen to you as a user of the software and build what you may very well want versus what they think people want and nine times out of 10, that's not effective. Yeah, I, that's a great list to live by. Um, and I think I think a lot of times we get caught up by like the shiny yes. features, like you said, of, of what it can do. And you think it's all amazing. One of the things that, and you mentioned this, that I always raise a red flag to is anytime I see a software product with a lifetime deal, I run. pretty much automatically click out of it. Just run. Yeah. It, so how would you, how do you kind of balance the, Oh, this is a good deal versus like, okay, I'm going to bite the bullet, but at least the company is going to be here in 36 months when I'm, when I'm using right. it. So the math never relies and we're business owners and we need to be critical thinkers. When we walk into something and 
we need to run it out three years from now if I need to talk to them once a month or I'm in three emails a day, that's costing somebody something. And if there's a thousand or 2000 users, that's just basic math that isn't gonna work because the company needs the money on the back end, not just to do that, they need to stay in development. So one of the pieces of software that I work with is $4 million a month just in storage is what they pay. Oof. So we don't know that that's what goes on behind software companies. So we don't give this enough thought or ask enough questions. When we go to pull our business, AKA our lives onto a piece of software, it's my office building. If my office building where all my customers came to was not stable, I'm, I'm bringing my family here. This isn't safe. So we need to think the same way when I build a business on a platform that it's going to be here in five years and it's going to listen to me as a user and support me to fulfill on what it is that they promise. And that's not always available. And it's certainly not available to somebody on a $30 a lifetime deal or 997 lifetime deal. What you're hearing is that they are already out of money. Mm -hmm. They need that influx of cash so that they can get it developed. Then they're going to need funding to help maintain that because they don't have the users to maintain that. So you need a company that's profitable. Yeah, that's that's a great way to look at things too. And um, you know, I I want to dive into how is your tech stack costing you money? You're already getting to it, but this I want to elaborate on this concept that that we're talking about here, where I'm sure you've heard this. There's there's the three three legged stool in business, right? You can be fast, you can be cheap. Uh, or you could be the best, but you can't be all three. Right. I disagree. I think it's just a matter of messaging. I think if mm -hmm. you focus on being fast and you focus on being the best, I can make a very clear argument, and you just did it for me, that you will also be the cheapest because you'll be there in the long run. So the cost of switching is now out of the picture. And ultimately, the users who stayed with you spent and avoided spending the most. So, so got to look at the owners as well. Are the owners buying Lamborghinis? Mm. Oh, what, are the, what are the owners' beliefs around money as well? So it's important, I think, for any business owner to lower expenses as much as possible. Cool. I work with a piece of software and the owners didn't work. Their wives supported them through the initial build. So we don't hear stories like that. We don't know what's really going on in the back end. And these owners are still the exact same people they were. They don't have big houses. They don't. So you've got to pay attention to the culture in this software as well. And it's um, the same in our personal lives when we go. The math is the math. The math. Yeah, it's math never lies, right? No, nope, no. Nope. Your math is my math because we're working with the same dollar. Right. That's like, right. That is right. Yeah. So then, so let's dive in. Let's talk about the, the mindset around costing you money. I think there's, there's a lot of different paths that you could take there. It's the actual cost. It's the opportunity cost, like we talked about. So how do you, how are you evaluating uh, when you're working with someone about their tech stack? How do you convey that it's costing them money or there's maybe better opportunities somewhere else? So the first thought that I have is, and, and one of the first questions I have is how excellent are you at Excel spreadsheets? Do you so want me to answer like, that? Because not good. Right. I roll a what? I'm all of a sudden, I'm like, what? Well, it's shiny. Look at the flowers, right? Like, I'm just like, not that girl. So that's my first sign that we are missing what? Critical data. If you've got 10 pieces of software, are you tracking in between all of those pieces of software? Absolutely not, right? There's my Spanish for you. It's not. <laughs> and so you need spreadsheets at best and great big dashboards you know would be ideal so if i've got a client coming through a calendar making an appointment and then they come into an email marketing software but I, and i send them over to a funnel to do this those jumps i can't track so if i'm in a piece of software that's all in one and i can actually see down the right hand panel this person was here 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 and here here's the opportunity here's where the traffic source was all the communication and then all all the emails i can see everything they've ever done so i know the value of that customer compared to another customer based on they've done 10 steps with me and this one's done one i'm going to talk to this person 
I'm going to sell to this person. I'm going to email to this person. They don't email. You don't email your whole list, folks. That's not going to work in 2024, right? You've got to segment lists. But how do you segment if you don't know where your customers actually are, where they were, where they would like to go next based on your next offer? And you won't have that information. So that's the first thing it's costing you is clarity to scale. That's huge. There was like 20 things to dive in on there, but right. clarity so to scale <laughs> is... <laughs> that, that is so huge. And that's what we look at is I call it duct tape software yeah. where you're putting like seven different apps together to achieve the same thing that if you spent $12 more a month, you could probably get in one app. Absolutely. And so yeah. What is that? I mean, aside from clarity, what else does that kind of mentality cost you? If I do not want to spend $97 a month, $200 a month on an all-in-one piece of software. I would question that business owner whether or not they actually believed that their business would is going to work. Hmm. Interesting. That's so inexpensive in the long run when you think about it, that if you put an offer out for $5,000, $2,000, $300, you'll get your money back. More so because you'll have the data from three years ago the other way it's costing you money is you're going to start and stop 10 more pieces of software between now and 2025. So the data is going to drop. It's going to miss. So you won't have it back to, to look back on, right? The best predictor of the future is the past. So if you know what people are buying, and you won't have that data if you don't spend a little bit and invest in the business. It's like I always say Pizza Hut. I don't know why I use Pizza Hut as an example, but if you wanted a Pizza Hut restaurant, you need the physical location and the pans and the employees, and you need the logo out front, you need the advertising, you need all of these things. You can start a multi-million dollar business today with just WordPress site and some grit, right? Like if you needed to. But what if you spent $97 a month and got a piece of software that actually you could grow into? It's like buying your first house. You get a fixer upper. Don't do that in your business. Get your forever home right out of the gate so that you can then you don't worry about, do you know what, do you know what it costs to switch software? Do you know what it costs to train staff on software? Do you know what it costs to put the processes in place for the next piece of software? And the staff gets exhausted from it. Yes, they do. And let me let me say that from experience. Yes, they do. And it does cost a lot of money. Yeah. But I know you have you have a guide to help us through that. So I'm going to toss your website up on the screen here. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that process and, and how you help educate people on what it costs to switch, how to switch properly? Sure. So I am an advocate, a promoter, a lover of software called High Level or Go High Level. I've chosen to become an affiliate for them and partner with them. And they are an all-in-one platform. And I am an absolute expert at the system and along with helping them get set up on it plus helping them actually make money with the software it's a whole business model as well but you need your business on it first figure it out get it set up and then determine how you want to create some of the recurring revenue as a software owner yourself if you wanted but it can go quite deep but i am the one that will help you get started on the software that's awesome. And I'll, I'll just show this for everybody watching. Pamela loves Go High Level so much. If we zoom out here, she's got their <laughs> logo in the background, which I love over there. I got um, that as a speaker at the last event. They, I was honored to be a speaker and they put that in the bag for me. So <laughs> You didn't mention that. So you're like a, a an expert expert in this software. Yes. I'm humble enough that when I say expert, I actually mean like expert expert, but um, it's yeah, I'm good at it. <laughs> If you were to anybody at high level and ask my name, they'll tell you who I am. <laughs> That's so cool. Well, I used to use high level in a previous business. I did not have the expert help to set it up. So um, I think this is this is valuable for anybody who needs help with with software, with transitioning. It doesn't have to be to go high level, but there's a there's a path to get there, right? It is, I mean it's it's just like moving house. It's yeah. a great acronym. You're going to have stuff in your current house that's not going to fit in the new house. You're going to have stuff in the attic that you've been hoarding. And that's just scarcity mindset. If you've got 14 funnels and 300 more that you've not used and all of that, that's just scarcity mindset. You've got to clean all of that out, just like you do in your house when you go to move over. And it's, there's a transition period and there's time that it takes to adjust. And it's a great time of year to do it. Slow down to speed up. And the 
number one objective may objection maybe is oh it's a lot it's a whole bunch of apps in one well there's nothing worse than logging into 10 different apps in one day right yeah. so it's like get into one and get it figured out and mine isn't perfect i still once a week i'll go build something or try and fix something or do something different or new in it and i don't overwhelm myself with it and just leave it and go serve as much as i can others yeah, I, I think this is a great conversation. I, I love this because it's not just, you know, on the surface, when we talk about our tech stack in, in the harmonious architecture, it touches a number of different elements. You got analyze, modify, you know, changing things. What are the metrics we're looking at? Obviously home, which it, how it interacts with your people and how your people interact with it. But I think bigger than all that, so we have the harmonious architecture, but then we also believe that business is mind body business. This is a mindset conversation around you as the owner and entrepreneur. What what is your mindset around your tech and the software you use? Because if you and, and Pamela said it so beautifully, but if you're making your employees suffer because you're trying to save a penny, I mean your your employee turnover is going to be so high. If you don't have employees, you're going to one day. You're going to need to. Yeah. If you want to grow and have a business, being a self-employed or um, a little side hustle, those things, that's fantastic. But you're going to grow or become extinct, one or the other. So the reason for business is to become profitable and make money and you need more help. Yeah, it, that's so true. And I always say, well, that's why we have the architecture, right? You want to have the framework and the structure in place because you said it, if you're not growing, you're, if you're, not growing, you're mm -hmm. dying. So the goal is to grow your business, to grow your side hustle. If it's just you working an hour a day, that's fine. Yeah. Are you doing this to grow it or to waste your time? So have the tools and the structure in place to get there and work with an expert like Pamela who can help you set up those tools so you're not pulling your hair out along the way. That's no fun. Who wants that? No, it's not. And it's um, a lot of words around tech. We get these things like overwhelm and it's too much. And my first instinct is, well, that thought is not helping us. No. That thought is not going to help us. So as a that thought needs to be changed. And if you've got a mission, if you've got a business, if you need the money to put your kids through college or retire, that thought isn't going to get you where you need to go. So, okay, you're not great at tech, maybe. I don't know the truth of that. Neither was I, honestly. And I don't think I'm the best one out there by any means. But what I'm passionate about is you making money. And the tech has, why would you get a shitty truck to haul the dirt when you can get a good truck. Like you make 16 more trips, right? Come from mm -hmm. the farm. So, you know, maybe that metaphors, <laughs> but you kind of get where I'm going with it, right? It's, you need a good tool and the, the better the tool. And I did pick that up on the farm. When you go to do something, if you've got crappy tools, you're just you're frustrated and you can't get where you need to go. Never mind quicker. Sometimes the tools just aren't effective. And it's the same in your business. Get that off the plate so you can go be of service and fulfill on what it is that you're here to do. Yeah, that's such great advice. And I, I know personally, um, I don't have the best tools at this point. And I can tell you from both my experience and a close friend of mine using the same tool that if, you're, if your tech isn't working, it's costing you money in a number of different ways. Yeah. We had, uh, she had actually, she was hosting an event and her tech collapsed and she yeah. couldn't send emails out to her registrants to be there live at the event. And I was like, that's costing you a, a reputation along with money, a number of other things. So, so um, true. So true. Yeah. Tech is always going to go down, right? Google was out a little while ago. And some bigger pieces are out every once in a while. You have to have something in place for that. And then, and just another note, an all in one doesn't mean that it's going to go down. The company is smart enough to know to put it on separate servers. Like we're talking about developers here that know how to do this. So it's safer than, than, than most because it is spread out. Yeah, that's so great. So if you want to take the next step and figure out what your tech is costing you, how you can improve it, or what tech you should be using in your business, I would love for you to reach out to Pamela. Her website's on the screen. We're going to include some, uh, some links in the show notes. And Pamela, where can we, can we find you on social media or where are you most active? Your GHL gal. So go high level GHL gal. Uh, YourGHLGal.com will take you to the same site and you'll see me out and about. YouTube and Instagram are probably the biggest places. Your username is YourGHLGal? Yep. 
So you're not only an expert expert, but you're like over the top super fan too. I love this. Kind of geeky. So I traveled to Dallas three times to meet the owners in person before I ever felt comfortable telling my friends, my family, my clients. Yeah, I think you can trust this platform. I actually went and interviewed them and sat with them in rooms and had dinner with them over and over and over again until I felt like they were actually going to do what they said they were going to do because I was involved in another company that didn't. Wow. Okay. So if you're evaluating tech and you're not flying to Dallas three times, you're not doing it right. So don't <laughs> sign up for those free trials. Go get on a plane and see if this tech is going to work for you. Well, I did the work for you. So you don't yeah. have to. <laughs> case, you got Pamela. So we GHL is vetted. But if you want to figure out how to switch tech in your business or just optimize your tech and see really what's costing you, go visit her website, go check her out and follow her on social media. Uh, Pamela, thank you so much for being here. This was a great, great episode. Um, and for those of you watching out there, Oh, please go ahead. It's so fun. Yes. Thank you. This was great. So thank you again. Thank you for watching. This has been a great episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We'll see you next time. And for now, for now go out there, grow your business and optimize your tech. It's costing you money. See you. Yes.